What is the difference between using a concentrated or a diluted strong base in a reaction? Well, thank you very much for that question. Let's just quickly repeat it for our viewers at home. He asked us, what is the difference in using concentrated or diluted strong base during a reaction? Now, in order for us to start off by understanding the question, we obviously would need to know what does concentrated and diluted mean. So first off, let's start off with the word concentrated. Concentrated means that it contains little to no water, whereas diluted means it contains much water. So a typical example would be if you're going to make yourself a glass of Oros. Oros, as it is in the container, is concentrated. It contains little to no water. But the moment that you are going to make it, let's say, one part to three parts of water and you add in your water, then we obviously end up with a diluted solution of Oros. So diluted meaning it contains a lot of water. Now let's go over to the next type of thing. And he spoke about a strong base. Now there is a difference between talking about a strong base or a weak base. Let's quickly just stand still at that point for now. If I'm talking about a strong base, it means in our case it dissociates completely. Now dissociate is just a fancy word for breaking up. So we will only be having two types of strong bases that you'll need to memorize. It will be sodium hydroxide, which is your NaOH, and potassium hydroxide, which is the KOH. So our sodium hydroxide, as an example, would break up or dissociate into sodium ions and hydroxyl ions. Now, if I do leave the sodium hydroxide for a while and come back, I'll notice most of it has broken up into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Very little of it will still be in the sodium hydroxide form. On the other hand, if I have a weak base, it dissociates partially. That means it breaks up only partially. So our calcium hydroxide over here would not like to break up into calcium ions and hydroxide ions. Most of it will still be in the calcium hydroxide form. So in this situation, we are going to be working with concentrated and or diluted strong bases only. That means either potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. Okay, now we're going to be discussing three types of reactions briefly. First off, we're going to be taking a look at substitution reactions, then addition reactions, and then lastly, our elimination type of reactions. First, let's start off with substitution. Now we can go and identify substitution reactions by taking a look at the type of bonds that we have between the reactants and the products. If I start off with my reactants with single bonds and I end up in my products also with single bonds, then we call it substitution. Note though the S's that you have, single to single means substitution. And in this situation, we will be substituting one atom at a time. Not just like you have at a game of soccer, one player will be leaving the field and another will player will come into its place. That type of substitution is exactly the same that's going to happen here. The only difference is here we'll have one atom leaving the specific molecule and another atom will come into its place. Now we'll take a look at different types of substitution reactions a bit later and those will typically be things like halogenation and hydrolysis. Let's quickly take a look at your addition type of reactions. Now for my addition, we will start off in my reactant molecule with double bonds and our product will end up having single bonds. So here we're going to go from double bonds to single bonds and this means so that two atoms will be added in during my addition reaction. So that means my double bond will break up and to the one carbon will add in one of the atoms and to the carbon adjacent to that will add in my second atom. Now there's a little bit a longer list of different sub reactions that we find in addition and those typical things are halogenation, hydrogenation, hydrohalogenation as well as your hydration type of reactions. Now let's go over to your last type of reaction and that is your elimination type of reaction. Now elimination is basically the opposite of addition. You'll notice here we will start with single bonds and end up with double bonds. So instead of adding into atoms we will now be removing the two atoms okay and those typical type of elimination reactions would be things like dehydration and dehydrohalogenation as well as cracking now let's jump right into taking a look at what is now the difference between using concentrated strong base or diluted strong base now one very important thing that we go must obviously know off by heart is if I use diluted strong base then I will end up with a substitution reaction taking place on the other hand, if I use concentrated strong base, I'll end up with an elimination reaction. 
Now let's start off by taking a look at an example to go and explain this. Now in order for us to be using something as an example, I'll be talking about a hello alkane. Now a hello alkane is basically two words that makes up my molecule. Hello means it comes from halogen, which is an element that forms in groups seven of the periodic table, things like chloride, bromide, fluoride, and iodide. And then alkane part is where I'm gonna have a carbon chain that contains only single bonds between the carbons. Now here's an example of a hello alkane. Notice there is my single bonds to my carbons and there is my halogen, in this case, bromide. So we're gonna be using our bromide that's attached to my hello alkane in this situation as an example for a starting molecule. Now, we're going to be adding in first diluted sodium hydroxide and the reaction condition for this will be mild heat. Now, what's important to note here is we are going to be kicking out the bromide because the bromide is the odd thing out. If we substitute the bromide out, we'll need to place something into that spot. And in this case, it will be the hydroxide ion that's going to take its place. Reason being, bromide on its own is a negative charge. The hydroxide ion will also be a negative charge. So we need to substitute the bromide also with something that has a negative charge. That's how come the sodium that's got a positive won't be the best option in this situation. So once we have now substituted in our bromide or rather our hydroxide into the bromide's place, note now that we're going to have an alcohol that forms. This is a bond to the oxygen and then there must be a bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. Very important though to show that little bond. Notice now that my bromide is floating around here together with the sodium and these two because they're positive and negative will attract each other and then they'll form part of one of my products. So we're going to have sodium bromide as one of the two products forming and as we already noticed there's the alcohol that will then be my second organic product. Now what's important to take a look at this situation is we form two products and we call this type of reaction hydrolysis. So whenever you form an alcohol and it's due to a substitution reaction, we call it hydrolysis. If you form the alcohol due to an addition reaction, we would have called it hydration. Okay, so but once again, in this situation, we formed it because it was due to a substitution, so therefore it's hydrolysis. Can you hear the S's? It's a dead giveaway there for you. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Let's discuss our elimination type of reaction. In elimination type of reaction, we said we're going to be using concentrated sodium hydroxide. So let's take a look at that reaction and see how much different that is going to be from my substitution reaction. So in our concentrated sodium hydroxide being added, we will not add mild heat, but proper heat, or you can also say reflux. And in this situation, the sodium will attach to the bromide and the hydroxyl ion will attach to the hydrogen. Remember that this is an elimination reaction. And in elimination reactions, we will be removing two atoms. And where those two atoms have been removed, the bond will fall flat to form a double bond. So we need to remove the two atoms. That's how come you'll notice here that the sodium ion attaches to the bromide to remove it. And we'll need to remove an atom from the adjacent carbon. And that's how come the hydroxide ion in this case will attach to the hydrogen. So once they have attached, notice they will be leaving now with two products, sodium bromide and the water, and their bond will fall flat to form a double bond here. And this is then my three products. I'm going to have an organic compound together with sodium bromide and water, and we call this dehydrohalogenation. So in our elimination type of reaction, we ended up with three products instead of two. So that's another way of identifying whether we use diluted or concentrated strong base. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a major and minor product that occurs during a reaction. How do I know which is the major and minor product? Well, thank you very much for that question. Let's just repeat it for our viewers at home. She asks us, sometimes there are major and minor products, but how do I know which one is which? Now, that's a very good question, and we're going to need to take a look at two rules. It's going to be the rule for Markovnikov and for Zaitsev. Okay, now I know that they're very weird and funny names, but don't worry, we will get through them. It's quite easy. Let's start off with our Markovnikov rule. Markovnikov has got to do with an addition reaction, but it's more specifically during the addition of an asymmetrical molecule. Now, an asymmetrical molecule is typically a molecule that if I cut it in half, the one side do not look like the other side. So we're going to be using this then as my example for an asymmetrical molecule. Good. Let's quickly read the rule for Markovnikov. It stated that 
with the addition of an HX, now know this H would obviously stand for hydrogen, the X could be anything from group 7, that means chloride, bromide, fluoride, iodide, any of those ones, to an asymmetrical alkene, the hydrogen atom is added to the carbon with the greater number of hydrogen atoms attached. This would then be seen as the major product. Okay, so let's quickly go and take a look at a reaction to see if we can see which one will then be the major and the minor. So when we say major product, it means basically that there's going to be two products that form. There will just be more of the one than of the other. That's how can we call the one the major product and the other one will be called the minor product. Okay, so here's my reaction. I'm going to be having an addition reaction of this asymmetrical alkene. That means my double bond would need to break and if it breaks, it have one bond opening up to each carbon on either side. So that means if I'm adding in the hydrogen bromide here, the hydrogen will be attaching to one carbon and the bromide to the other. But that basically means I've got two options. Either the hydrogen attached to the first carbon and the bromide to the second, or the bromide attaches to the first and the hydrogen to the second. Okay, so we're going to be having, as I said, both of them forming. One will just be the major and the other one will be the minor. So let's quickly go and see which one is then seen as the major. So once again, we said, Markovnikov said that when we add in HX, the hydrogen atom, sorry, in this case, attaches to the carbon with the greater number of hydrogen atoms already attached. So we need to go and count them. Here's my first carbon. It already have two hydrogens attached to it. This one just have one. Therefore, my hydrogen would rather want to attach to this carbon because there's already two friends next to it. Over here, there would just be one. So that means my bromide would end up attaching here. So this one will then be seen as my major product where the hydrogen attaches to the one with the two and the minor product will be where the hydrogen attaches just to the one that has got one hydrogen attached to the carbon. Okay, so that goes for my Markovnikov's rule. Let's go over to Zaitsev. Now Zaitsev has got to do with an elimination reaction. So once again, we're going to talk about an asymmetrical alkane or alkene in this situation, but then it means that when we form this double bond, it's going to end up being an asymmetrical. So when I cut the molecule in half, the two sides won't look the same. Let's quickly take a look at the rule. It states that if there's more than one product possible during an elimination, the major product will be the alkene with the highest substituted double bond. So in our situation, we can either have the bromide and this hydrogen being removed or this bromide and that hydrogen. So that means we're going to end up with two possible double bonds, either between carbon one or two or two and three. In order for us to go and identify the major one, we're going to need to name it. So the first one is going to be named but one in and the second one but two in. But two in is obviously our highest substituted value and therefore but two in is going to be the major product but one in, just the minor. <laughs>